Red FM is at Jaipur Literature Fest. My name is Kavir, and finally, Jaipur Literature Fest is back on ground. And I have with me Namita Gokhale, the festival director. Very happy and smiling all together, ma'am. How does it feel coming back on ground after a small hiatus? Well, two years of isolation and digital sessions. It gave our literature festival a whole new identity. To have things like. Uh, uh, Brave New World series, Words Are Bridges series. So it, we learned a lot. We got a lot in those days. But we also, kya khoya, kya paya. We 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 were lonely. We were isolated. We were in verticals. And today we are here. And as we speak, if I may tell you, uh, I have made one of the most important choices of my life because right now in Delhi, in the Sahitya Academy. I am being conferred the Sahitya Academy Award wow. in absentia oh, wow. because I decided not to go because I decided my place was here in the Jaipur Literature Festival with the writers I had invited with all the people I cared about and uh, I'm heartbroken because in a digital world you can actually be in two places at the same time had that been a digital session and this had been a digital session it would have been switch on switch off but I voted with my feet for this festival because uh, William Dalrymple and I created it 15 years ago. Yes. And every writer who comes here, I, I want to be with them. I want to share the joy of their sessions and their books. So my answer is yes, online, offline, on ground, human hearts when they beat together in synchronicity, which can happen when we are next to each other. That's so beautiful. Okay, uh, ma'am, you're so, you know, always so enthusiastic about JLF. What is the essence of JLF for you? Well, everybody has a different essence for JLF. I'm sure Sanjo has a different take. William has a different take. But for me, it is the Indian languages. And I make sure that the Indian languages are represented here. Not only the Indian languages, but languages around the world apart from English. It's ironic I'm speaking in English. Because it's a sort of a world language. I write in English. I believe in English. But I don't think that's the only language in the world. I was talking to this Icelandic writer. She writes in Icelandic. And there's a, every world, every language opens up a new world. Wow. And every language that we lose closes one world. Ma'am, uh, see how I look at it from you know an outsider who has been attending G JLF is that you know the youngsters they they pick up books in a digital world. Do you think that we are doing enough as community or as a nation for youngsters to pick up books, not not the digital kinds, but really pick up books? I think for youngsters. The biggest problem is that when we write for them, we don't think about who we are writing for. Uh, the writers, I've written two books for young readers, mm -hmm. and the Mahabharat for young readers has been out for 12 years. It's become pretty much a classic, but that's because the Mahabharat is such an eternal story. Okay. I've done another one for young readers now, which uh, is called Ghatotkach and the Game of Illusions. In Hindi, it is Ghatotkach ke Maya Jal mein. Magar, Many of my very talented writers, when they write for young people, they talk down to them. What I try to remember is the younger generation is smarter than us. That's true. We need reverse mentoring. Uh, the other side of this is like when the older people, my generation or generation before me, <laughs> you know. And the other side, younger and younger people are writing. I know at least four young people below 11 who have written fabulous books. One has written the Mahabharata in rhyme, one is just these. I know people from the age of 11 or 12 till the age of about 18 who are writing with more creativity than any of the older people I know. So I said they are the ones who have to tell their own stories. Because frankly, our generation ki stories are okay. finished. Okay. Ma'am, uh, do you think that publishers are doing enough, whatever ways, to encourage you know, youngsters to read? I mean, they, on they one are, side they, they have... They are doing their best. Okay. But I find a lot of the children's books are actually bought by the parents. For That's their true. children. That's true. And they buy the sort of books they 
think their children should be reading, which may not be the most interesting for their children. We need to get the children to tell their own stories and to buy their own books. If uh, my daughters were younger, I, and that's what my daughters had the right to do, I had an account in a bookstore and they could choose their own books. But right now we think, oh, internet, me ye mat paro, don't do this. There's so many sensors which are necessary. But there should be, for when young people read, if they have a sense of discovery, they will love the book. And if they are being pushed by publishers, parents, teachers, they will treat it like a duty. They will never have that joy of discovery. Absolutely. It's lovely at JLF that, you know, when you sit down for a session, you actually have the author, you know, a prominent personality probably from that particular field talking about the book, talking about the, the art form that they're involved in. Uh, which were your favorite sessions? I'm sure it's all of them, but anything that you're really, really looking forward to? You won't trap me on that. I'm looking for <laughs> each and every session. Each and every writer here is important to me and I wander in and out of sessions. Sometimes some word, some phrase remains with me, but for me the most important interactions are off stage. Like I was sitting there in the lounge just now and Kirsten, this Icelandic writer was there and I know her session, I helped her, I mean, I know who's in conversation with her. I know what she's going to talk about, but when she talked about the spirits, because I know that in Iceland they believe in spirits, and we talked about the, the paranormal in okay. Iceland, okay. which is through her children's books as well. Wow. It was, it moved me so deeply that this conversation off, the conversation off the stage has for, so far been the most important conversation of these last two days. But I'm sure this evening will have more surprises, tomorrow we'll have more surprises. So Jaipur is a treasure trove of surprises, don't you agree? I completely agree and if uh, passion and enthusiasm had a face, the festival director absolutely enthusiastic and really happy with this. We're having a great time. So am I. <laughs> People who are probably not here, can you just tell them what are they missing? You're not missing it. Go on digital and uh, look it up there and read the books then you won't miss it. Come here next year. Uh, I won't make you feel bad about not being here, but we are feeling great about being here, that's for sure. <laughs>